So welcome to another <clears throat> war game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a 2020 game called Napoleon 1807. This is a designed by a French company called... I've just... Shakos. Shakos. Okay. <laughs> I just looked it up and everything to pronounce right. it, because I don't want to mess it up. Right. Uh, this particular game, and I believe the other one in the series, is designed by... I apologize... Denis Sauvage. That sounds amazing. Oh, I hope that's right. Yeah. If I did we it hope. right, let me know. We Kudos hope. in the comments to me. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, 1807 Napoleonic game. There's, like I said, this is part of the Conqueror series. Mm -hmm. There's there's one other one of these, which is Napoleon 1806. Yep. Uh, that came out about two or three years ago. This one just came out in 2020, and it's a... Um, I wouldn't no. say it's a block game. It's... It's a formation yeah. core, right? Yeah. Your 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 control. So these markers represent an army. Yeah. Core, so right? so it's a it's a point to point movement game about the whole campaign in eighteen oh seven. Right. They Which are this blocks, is in. Yes. And you can play it yep. optionally as hidden movement, like so, like almost like a, a block game where you get that. You would set element. it up so that your opponent cannot see which core you're moving. But or yes, cores. That is part of the optional rules in the section called Grognard. Rules for the Grognard, yeah. which is fun. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the core rules and how it's intended, I believe, to be played is everything's open. You just have them laid out. And like you said, these blocks have commanders on them, and they correspond to strength point values mm -hmm. on this chart, which is hidden from the opponent. Yeah, you so you get, you get that screens. hidden element with what's what how strong a block is, but at least you know what the block is. So maybe you may, might be able easy to remember that. Well, and and one of the real keys to the game is you never really truly know what condition yeah. that core is in. You may know from playing that Bhagavat is you know, he has six or two, he has six infantry and two cavalry. Therefore, he's going to bring two cards in combat. But you know what? You may remember, oh, I did a couple damage to him, so he may not get the two cards. Yes. But you never know how much fatigue he has. Unless you sit there with a notepad and you write, which I don't believe is in the spirit of the game. It's not in the spirit of any game. Right. I mean, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I want to, in many ways, be surprised with this type of... That's the fun I mean, of it. That's why they designed it like this, yes. so that you don't know... And to me, it reflects imperfect intelligence yes. and understanding of the disposition of your army as well as their capability, their location. Do they have their artillery attachment uh, ready? I mean, that's what this game's about. It's about yes. trying to understand how to get done what you need to done do without knowing all that information. Yeah, so there's a bunch of scenarios in this box, which is quite nice. 13. There's a, there's a couple uh, options for linking them all together and playing like the whole campaign game, so to speak. So you can tailor it based on how long you've got to play. Yeah. Uh, the shorter scenarios, I think this, there's some scenarios that are like four turns long, a bunch that are like eight turns long, and then up to like 12. A couple that are 12. I think. And, and, and we found that I think each of the turns, because you're literally drawing three cards, I mean, I think a turn's going to be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I, once I, you know the rules. Yes, yeah, uh, maybe more like 20. I would say. Oh, yeah. because there's some decisions to well, you think gotta about. Decide what, you got to look at your cards yeah. and decide what you're going to do. And maybe it would get quicker, maybe. I think 15 minutes is probably... So you're going to play four to five turns in an hour. Yeah. Once you know the rules. So yeah, a 12-turn scenario is going to be two, two and a half hours at the most. Yeah, it's which is nice, right? Yeah. It's, it's refreshing to have a game that's Napoleonic's that goes along at a good clip. Yeah, we've played some that are, that are much more involved. Yes. Which is great as well. This one is kind of on that lighter end. Quicker playing, although there's a lot of detail. I mean, the, the way the... Considering, absolutely. Right, yes. the way the operations... It's a card-driven game. Yes. So the way the op points are used, how you have to take movement penalties and reduction based on how many core you're, you're moving... Um, also the events and then the symbols. There, there's just a lot to think about. Yeah, and, and and everything relates back 
to the condition of the core that you have, right? As well, so you've got this hidden chart. You can just see him over here. These big, these big. Uh, well, get one of the it's dividers. In the box. Get one of the un ones that we didn't use. Yes. And there are six of there are three of these that are double sided. Yeah, and you use them for different campaigns. scenarios. And Basically, campaigns. you've got all your commanders, and then they'll have a number of cubes denoted here by their starting numbers, and that's how many. That's like their strength points. Blue ones are infantry for the French, and yellow ones are cavalry, so you might have a mix of both. And basically, you've got all of those, that's your strength points, but then there's this empty kind of white line underneath that you will fill up with fatigue, which is these red cylinders, and if, you know, if that ever gets maxed out, You're your dead. core is done, regardless of how many strength point losses you've taken. Or, if you lose all of your strength points as, like, uh, casualties in combat, you're dead that way. So you have two levels of like hit points basically. Yeah. Which I absolutely love that. Yeah. One's descending and one's ascending. Mm -hmm. And you try to balance those, which and, is and, nice. And you really need to think about it, your your units determine the number of cards that you get to draw in combat, and that's the way combat's resolved. You're drawing cards off the top of your deck, you're looking in the bottom left hand corner at yep. how much fatigue do they inflict and how many losses. So that determines that, and then the bottom the fatigue really determines are they almost dead or not? Yes. You know, are, are are they can I really do much else with them or do I really need to kind of set them off to the side and start doing some of the fatigue some of the recovery, reduction yeah. recovery elements? I I like that. So you had to worry about both those things and what's more I had to worry about your guys. You yeah, know, there's and, and and that's the bit where you're like this game wasn't wasn't difficult to learn. No, not at the, all. The rules are not complicated. And actually, that's something we talked about. Yeah. For being a French-published game that was published mainly in French, right? Yeah. These were probably the best, clearest, yes. most easily understood translated rules I think we've ever seen. We've played a lot of these types of games. Yes. And a good chunk of that is... Symbolic. Due to, there's a lot of, this game uses symbology to help, and that not only yeah. keeps the game accessible anyway. I'm trying to hide that from you, but, but look. Oh no. <laughs> but it also helps <laughs> itself be mm -hmm. less language dependent. Well, it, it's easier to recover from, or to understand because you're using symbology. But, but if you read the rule book, there were no questions that I had from the rule book. No. The only... The only times where I had any questions were when, you know, it was like a shortened version of a rule on, a, on like a plate or the quick start guide. Yeah. Where it just is like, they're just trying to throw you into like an easy version of the game. Yeah. And you're like, uh, okay. And then you just look up the regular rule and the regular was extremely clear and yeah. a bit more precise because it's the rule book. Yep. And so the translation is excellent. It was mm -hmm. easy to learn. And it doesn't read like it's a translation either, no. which is like extra brownie points. Yeah. Uh, so so they must that, have hired they did a good job. Someone that they was did really make. fluent in both languages, and they really ended up with a very good product. Yes. From a playability standpoint, production is also very good. But yes, lots of a, lots of cards, lots of wooden pieces, different uh, little you know flag meeples, like little yeah. castles, all the different cubes and. And cylinders. It, it's, These are called citadels. Don't call them castles. Sure. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's the castles from Pendragon. Right, right. It is. That's what they are. <laughs> That's what they are. <laughs> but it's it's fun to play with. Mm -hmm. And whilst the rules were really easy to learn, uh, yeah. there was a lot of tough decisions to be made. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are, there are decisions to be made even from, like, how many of your cards, if any, you're going to play in a turn. Right. Because if you're all got a ton of fatigue and it's in the mid game, you're like, my goodness. You may want to recover. If you do nothing with your units, they'll recover all their fatigue. Mm -hmm. But you sacrifice doing anything. So your opponent may kind of run roughshod. Yeah. And kind of move into position to really put a hurting on you next time. But that trade off is get rid of all that fatigue. And oh. then they'll have a bunch of fatigue. Yeah, and right. So, and so you get into some, you know. You don't have to play any cards on a turn. You could just pass if you wanted. You're right. And uh, I don't know that that's wise, only because no. we, we found out You might that, be desperate. <laughs> well, you might be desperate, but the victory conditions, this is a pendulum victory point yes. scale. 
You usually start, I think we started right in the middle at 7. Actually, we started yeah, it's, a little closer it's zero, to your victory. It's 0 to 20. 20. Yeah. We started at 7. I think the final score was 9, nine points. <laughs> So we gained a little bit and lost a little. But, you know, you really, one, you don't have enough time to really mess yeah. around. Two, you got to remember every opportunity that you didn't play a card can be seen as an opportunity lost. Yeah. And then I think thirdly, that concept of managing the, the, the stress, or not stress, fatigue you know, you don't get many units, new units, you know, you're, you're not, not getting yet. new units. So you, you, you may have a ton of fatigue, but it really doesn't hurt you. Yeah. There's very few cons where you can like recover an actual strength. Point. Yeah. It, it's just not. So I don't know. There was just a really, a lot to think about. I also, we have played many point to point movement games. Yes. I don't know that it's my favorite form of movement, but I am starting to appreciate the strategic nature of it. Yeah. much more. We've played some really good ones. I mean, here I stand as one of the all-time classic <laughs> yeah. card-driven games that uses area movement. Wilderness War is another one. I mean, there's so many that we've played. But this implementation of point-to-point -point movement, I think, really creates some very interesting opportunities and challenges about how you're trying to move around this map. Yeah, if only there was one connection between these two places. Or but... Or they threw in an extra stopping point in between these two places. Yeah. Like, oh, like there's, it uh, makes some nice challenges. Well, it, it's always interesting, too, when I'm playing these games, knowing that they've been play-tested. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know they ended up putting that, that fork in the road there and an extra stop was meant to prevent me from immediately rushing yeah, it's, Danzig. It, it stops you know? this huge right. kind of... Uh, I can still get there, but it's going to take me two turns. Rather than before, it could have taken me one. Or I've pulled my one card that gives five movement points. And right. it's like, you know what? You can do it. But that's your best card. It's your best and card. And now you're never going to see that again. Well, and you're also going to get a bunch of stress. Because each movement point you use... Yeah. You, I, I, there's just a lot of... I really enjoy that. I always feel like Napoleonic games should be about... At least partially about... It's always about combat... But it should be about the tactical movement and disposition of of your your, your combatants and your troops. Yeah, this one and, and it's maneuver. All, it also, I also think of it in a way as a little bit like logistics, where like you 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 can move really far if you've got the cards to do it. Yeah, you're going to take a bunch of fatigue because mm -hmm. your troops are tired and that, and you know they've eaten half their rations. If yeah. you sit there and don't do anything. They get to rest, and your baggage train gets to catch up with you, and all that fatigue goes away. Mm -hmm. But you spend so long doing nothing. Right. Is that tactically worth it? It's a way well, and in some cases it is, some cases yes. it's not. But it's it's a neat it's a neat way to kind of um, abstract really complex supply rules and all of like that actual stuff. Yeah. That I know some people love that. Some people think it stands in the way of a good war game. At this scale and this style of game, I'm glad that they did that. I, yeah. But they're I, not worried about tracing supply lines and all that stuff. Yeah. They don't do any of that in this. Yeah. I, it just makes for a different experience. When when you have to worry about supply, some games it's really, really good to worry about yeah. that. This, it's not as important. The scale's different. The distances are different. I, I don't know. But I, I really liked the way the board was, was set up. Yeah. Um, also talking about those cards, I mean, we went through after playing it and reviewed the different types, you know, there's ones that have to be a played, played during the initiative phase. You really have no choice, you know, which that can be a, a harm or a, or a benefit. It just depends. And there's some that you have to do during operations phase if you use the events and then some that, what was it? The draw phase or initiative draw and operations. Yeah. So it's it's very cool how those work. I think from reading the text on the events, you can immediately understand when you should be playing yeah, those. And, and if you can't figure it out, there's a symbol at the top that says basically play during this tells phase. you which phase you can play it in, and that will help to explain why a card's worded a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Like this, like the symbol has a French flag. You play this on my turn, right? And it's like it's an interrupt. Yeah, it's an interrupt. Whereas if you had just read the text, you're like. I guess this is an interrupt, mm -hmm. I, I think. But that cleared it, cleared but, yeah, it up. Yeah, the little symbols at the top. Yeah. I mean, like, yes, this is. This is what yeah. you're playing it correctly. And, and the cards are really well done. They are multi-use cards. They don't just have the operations points yeah. 
and the events, but they're also used uh, to recover. You know, we talked yep. about that. When you're all jacked up, you cannot play a card, hold on to it, and at the end you can, oh, I'm going to use it to remove two fatigue on these cores. Yes. Um, or you're going to, when you're doing combat, and you'll show it in the, but you're going to draw a number of cards off that top and refer to the bottom left. Yes. Oh, I did, I did two fatigue to you. You draw, I did three fatigue and a, a reduction yes. on, on your armies. I really liked that. Did, did you like that? I always, so, I, I don't know what it is about that. Maybe it's because it means that I might actually have a good draw mm -hmm. instead of just rolling ones on my dice all the time. <laughs> it's a little more deterministic than yeah. just rolling random dice. You have this closed system of cards that not only are you using for your ops and your events and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but that's also combat resolution. Yeah. You pull your number of cards... And you look at losses and fatigue in the bottom left-hand corner. That's what you do. Yeah. And so, uh, it's always interesting from a design standpoint. Uh, on the really good cards, they put like a bunch of fatigue yep. and SP losses. So you're like, yeah, four, four op card. I've got a fatigue and a loss yeah. that I can inflict on you. So I want that in my hand because I want to use those four ops. But dang it, I also want that in my deck for drawing for combat. So when I pull it for combat, I'm going to smoke you. So yeah, you've got a hand of really good cards. You know your combat has worse chances yep. of being good, or vice versa. Boy, I got a bunch of ones and twos. That means my deck's full of cards that have a yeah. lot of wounds so and maybe, a lot of maybe I can take fatigue. that extra risk and bam bam bam, yeah. bam I do a bunch of stuff so, so I like that uh, it also came with dice it must have been yeah. a, maybe a kickstarter I'm not sure extra but the dice really just randomize the uh, card pull combat resolution you're going to roll those and it's got the same symbols <laughs> but you know what if you're a good roller not that you're can be good. Uh, well, you might get two and three positive results where sometimes on your cards you're going to get nothing. But yeah, and it's basically the dice aren't mentioned anywhere in the rules. Right. There's one little box where it's like, hey, the dice aren't mentioned anywhere in the rules. Yeah. It's an option you can choose to do this instead yeah. of pulling cards. Yeah. To me, whilst that's fun and they're really nice quality dice, you lose um, a whole aspect to the game where mm -hmm. it's cards in my hand versus cards in yeah. my deck. You you actually lose something from a game that I really like. I love mm. having a closed system and how that how I use my cards in that way. Yeah. I enjoy that and you basically say, I'm just gonna roll the dice, which is random, but then I I just I do I just ignore that half the card and so I I don't know, I feel like I lose some of the Oh, this good card. Oh, the combat. Yeah, I don't have that anymore. It's just no. like I've got, I've got my good cards out. Oh, well, I, I mean, if you have the dice, literally, you can always have a good attack, or you yeah. can always have a bad attack. And here in this instance, you can always have a good attack, but you can also have a bad attack. But you can kind of look at your discard pile and you'll be like, oh boy, my odds have got to improve because I've pulled nothing <laughs> but crap. They, or they're going to be real bad, yeah. so i got to try and do something else. You know, it reminds me of Combat Commander. I think that's the game that uses cards... To resolve combat, I've always enjoyed that because there's some gaming the system um, because, oh, you know, I pulled all these bad cards, I'm going to have, but there's also a little less randomness, so it's, yeah, to me, I, a little more fun. I, I love games that have that. Yeah. I understand why people don't, but yeah. I do. I, I I don't know. There's something about it that I enjoy. Fields of Fire is the same way where yeah. you just, you're pulling cards and cards and cards. Tank Duel is the same way. And yeah. Having that closed system means that there's something in there to, to try and play with. You can be, you can try and be gamey with it. Yeah, which is interesting as an intellectual exercise to just kind of like, uh, and, and or it's you not, can know a little bit better about like, oh, yeah. what's it? My odds might be worse, might yeah. be better. You can at it's least not like try I'm, to gauge it. It's not like I'm sitting here with a spreadsheet no. entering. Ooh, I pulled that card. That means I have a 33.3 percent repeating, of course, of course, chance of. <laughs> winning this next combat, or it's, I just want to know, oh, you know, I've pulled no sixes or no multiple hits. They got to come up soon. Yes. So it, it adds that other element. And I also want to argue the design team and development team created it that way. Yeah. That's, that's the way the game balanced says the, out. The dice is for like, I don't know if I was, I don't know when I would do it. Maybe if I was playing with my kid. Yeah, maybe. maybe. And he likes to roll dice. Yeah. I just, I'm not sure. To me, there's so much more. In, right. in using the cards as intended. 
Well, you could. I mean, there could be a runaway game, right? If you kept rolling really well, I mean, yeah. that, that could get out of control. And you know I've rolled well sometimes. Yes. It would be very disheartening to yeah. roll poorly. In this. this is, I like the cards Yeah, I, better. they did a good job. What I'll do is I'll actually show you them so you can see what we're talking about. And then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a, it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Here's a look at the map. Uh, we've got here, you can see it's all point to point. Uh, it's a really nice looking map. And you've got these blocks, which are your leaders. Uh, the blocks move on the board, and they don't have any inherent values on them. Once you're used, you flip them over. So you can use them once per turn. You can't move a guy with one card, and then on your next card, do something else with him. So that way you get that Napoleonic, kind of slow moving. You can't do a whole bunch. There's no blitzkrieging in this game or anything like that. All of your information is on these orders of battle. They look like this. You have all of your commander blocks that correspond to what they are on a board, and then this is going to be filled up with cubes. I'm going to very, very carefully oh, try to show you this one here. So this is what something's going to look like in the middle of a game. So you've got uh, your strength points are the colored cubes. So we've got green for infantry, pink for cavalry, and you've got some, uh, you know, cavalry only core. Then we've also got Underneath those, these red cylinders, is a line of fatigue. So each um, each commander, you've got one line for your strength points, which is effectively a measure of your hit points before you're destroyed. But you also, if you gain enough fatigue, you'll also be destroyed that way. So you've got these two different uh, ways that you can effectively take a kind of damage, and you mitigate those in different ways, and they represent different things, which, again, I appreciate. It adds a level of interest and nuance to a game. So this is hidden behind a secret screen, so I know how much damage I've taken, but the enemy doesn't really know, apart from maybe the most recent thing that they have that they can remember in the combat that they had, you're gonna have an imperfect understanding of your opponent's force composition. But the core gameplay is done with these cards. Uh, you each have a deck of cards. Um, the decks are not identical. Uh, you'll draw two or three, well, you'll draw three cards, and then the cards are used back and forth for their operations value on them, which is anywhere from like one to five, and then, or you can use them for the events. Sometimes you can use those on your turn, sometimes they're reactions to be used on someone else's turn, and the cards will tell you what those, what, what they mean by that. When it comes to combat, so let's say I'm going to use this card, to activate this guy over here, he can move um, two spaces, because he's got two movement points from that card. If I had activated multiple guys, it's basically, you can move multiple guys in the stack, but they take a penalty to the movement factor. So if I had two guys, they'd be able to move one space. But in this instance, he's going to move two spaces, one, two, and then, and then I can optionally initiate a combat, but I would have a penalty to my combat, or I can just sit there. If I sit there, then I'm done. I can't do anything else for the rest of the hand, but then, moving up on the turn track in my next hand, I'll be flipped back over. If he's still here, we could just do kind of a pitched battle. If I move and do combat, what we're going to do is we're going to reference our, our little order of battle uh, he's, oh, he is kind of on here. So, if I've got cubes on this half of the board here, I'm going to get one battle card. If I've got cubes going up here, I get two battle cards over this big dividing line down the middle. So, for example, if I was at full strength and I could have two cards, because I moved and I'm doing a combat, it's two cards minus one. So I don't have my full full amount of cards. So that's the kind of the attacking penalty, so to speak. The person on defense, they would look at, if they're in any terrain, if they're in a green terrain, they get a plus one card, or if they're in a walled city, plus one card, or if they're in a citadel that has one of these little castle markers, plus one card. So this guy, he's going to look at his little board over here, and his little board says he's going to get one card. But... He's also got fatigue coming out of his butt, so he's uh, he's at a negative there as well. 
So right. this is where you start getting into the nuances of, do, uh, am I as a Russian player trying to run him away so that he's not getting attacked? Or am I trying to rest him to remove all that fatigue? But what we'll do is let's just say this was a pitched battle and we had a couple guys in here. I'm gonna draw two cards and we'll say the defender draws three, just as an example. So the attackers, the blue ones, they're gonna draw two cards. And the defender, we got the Russians, they're gonna draw three cards, we'll just say. And what we look at here is the only thing that matters is the bottom left hand corner of the cards. So this one here has one fatigue symbol that I inflict on an opponent, another fatigue symbol that I inflict, and then they will take one step loss as well. And what they did to me is they do one, two, three, four fatigues and one step loss. And so then you get out your, your little order of battle and whoever's in the combats, you're adding fatigues on there. Hopefully you don't reach this threshold and immediately die. That's not good. You're gonna suffer losses from right to left. And if you, obviously, if you lose all your strength points, you get, you, uh, they're, they're removed from the board and completely dead. And all of that, the strength points cost you victory points. Each strength point you lose is a victory point. And again, it's on a swing. So you might have a battle where you lose two, but they lose one, so it's a net one swing. Or you might dominate someone and they're going to lose two or three because you pulled really good cards. And you're going to get a big swing that way. But then it's their turn, they're going to combat you somewhere else and they're going to get victory points. It's a nice little swinging pendulum there as well. But that, that, honestly, that's the core of the game. They do have a dice option, which, I don't know, you can just roll the dice and this is a fatigue loss. And this is obviously uh, a, um, a step point loss. Not my favorite thing in the whole world. And whoever wins the, the combat, e.g. whoever takes more step losses has to retreat. If it's equal, you just stay there and you'll have a pitch battle next time, basically. But the, that's the core of it. The core of it is trying to manage your forces if you want to do a whole bunch of stuff, you're going to end up taking a lot of fatigue, probably. If you want to take, if you want to remove your fatigue, you have to do nothing for a whole hand, and then you can remove all your fatigue. But in doing nothing, you might be outflanked. Someone might keep attacking you anyway, inflicting more fatigues on you. So there's a lot to consider in each of your card plays. Uh, also, you're looking at your cards for, you know, do I do I play a bunch of things? Because here's the thing. If you do nothing because you want to get a whole bunch of fatigue removed from everything and you don't play any cards in a hand, you can you can optionally do that. I'm not sure I'd advise it, but you can do it. Uh, what happens is, is then I've got these three cards. You don't discard them, you keep them. And so the next turn, I'm going to draw three more cards. So whilst I didn't do anything that one turn, this turn, I can up play up to six cards if I want to. Can't play the red ones. Those get played immediately as soon as you draw them. But let's say you ended up with six cards you can then have a monster hand, where you do a whole bunch of stuff. And then the opponent's only got their three cards, and they, you know, don't want to play all of them, or they're not all great. And so you end up with, you know, turns that aren't necessarily um, equal. They're not necessarily balanced, but over the course of a campaign, you're typically going to end up playing the same cards. But how and when those momentum swings happen is based on your decisions as a commander. You have a lot of choice in this game. So that's kind of how the game plays, and what we'll do is we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So that was a look at the map, uh, and how the combat works. Um, the production value of this game is off the charts, basically. Very nice. Very, very nice. They have these beautifully, not really embossed, but really nice bags. I mean, how cool is that? Doesn't serve any game function. Well, you're not other drawing than storage. You're not drawing them out. You're literally just storing right. the blocks. In it, there. it doesn't doesn't look like a bag you would. You yeah, know, it's just a really nice production. Yeah, the, the, all of the different wooden pieces. The cards have nice. Um, I don't know if those are like drawn for this or if those are like <sighs> historical sketches. Could be one of the. Yeah, I, I guess I. I don't, I don't know. know. The no, artist no. is featured on the box, so I think it might be his yeah, work. Yeah, the artist is Nicholas Triel. So it might those might be like his yeah, drawings. Which these might have just been. E either way, they're dope. I really like yeah. those. Well, that seems to be a similar style to the to the box. So maybe, but yeah, the art's really nice. I think the colors are really nice. I, I you know my the the Prussian Polish cavalry is pink, mm -hmm. which I'm okay with that. You know, real men wear pink, right? <laughs> so I I thought that was good. I think overall this game is really nice. When I got the package, I remember thinking, dang, what'd they do? Load a couple extra bricks yeah, in there? Yeah, it's, it's a lot. 
so it, it, it great production. I think it works well. It plays well. It's fun. It's interesting. It's entertaining. Lots of neat systems here. This is a two-player game and basically only a two-player game. I mean, you could always two-fist it because I, I guess when I do those kind of games, I can't remember what cards I've got. Whilst that's true, you lose so you much lose this from, hidden, the, from yeah. the hidden conditions of your yeah. core. It's yeah. basically play a different game. Yeah. That's I, what I would say. I would say find a buddy and, and yeah. play this. That's the way it's intended this to be is, played. This is a fun two-player game. Yeah. Takes two and a bit hours if you play the whole thing, and it's not complicated, so you could just have a good time playing, and you frankly just get into the action right away. Yeah, I mean, we from the moment we started, it was bam. I think we yes. had an attack immediately. I regretted that attack, <laughs> but it was fun to learn the system and but, interesting. But yeah, it's it's a game that is accessible to basically anyone. Yeah, I, frankly, I would say for this style of a game, anybody can get into yeah. those rules. And I really liked that quick start guide. Where is that? It's over there. Oh, yeah. That was really well done. It's a little... It's basically this, this, and then a, and then a setup. Chart. So four, four large pages. This gives you a stripped down version of the game. Yeah. You don't... You know, you don't have as many of the cool bits and pieces. They're like, ignore the events and don't do this yeah. and don't do that. It's literally just like... Move and shoot, move and shoot, move and shoot, and you just kind of do yeah. that. But it, you know, if you, it got us into the game really quick. Yeah, you can open it up, play a game immediately. Yeah, uh, and then from there you just add all everything else from the regular rules. Yes, and you can start playing more and more and more. Or this is also a game you can just read rules and play it normally. Well, you don't I, need that. Right, but, it, but I would say neat. that quick start guide that is a really good way to just learn the basics. Yeah. Then you want to dive into the other rules because you want to play it with all the symbols and the yeah you know the the recovery. I mean, you want to play it with all of those. That's the way it was intended to be done. It's more it's more fulfilling. It, it's a game, better sure. game, I would say, with those elements. But the, a quick start guide that works and does what it's supposed to game is impressive. Brain. Yeah, right. Yeah. How, how many games have a quick start guide and you're like what? What am I doing? Here? Yeah, I feel like I didn't like learn my le anything. You'll, you'll learn to play as long as the regular rules. I'll yeah. just read the regular rules. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I, I think anybody, I really think anybody could sit yeah. down at this and capture the understanding of what you're supposed to be doing and play this and enjoy it. Yes. It's and a, learn something about history. That's the thing I was going to talk about. Yeah. Campaign I don't really know much about. We're not big crunchy. Napoleonic no. players, but... And if I am, it's at like uh, an even larger grand tactical scale yeah. on a computer game. Right. That guy, this particular campaign I don't know much about, so we play through it, mm -hmm. and then in the back of the rule book, there's like four or five pages of details about yeah. what went on and the history which is always a big bonus to learn something new as well. Hands down, this is the best Napoleonic game we played this year. We only played one other. But it was <laughs> definitely the best. It was definitely better than that. Yeah. Now, that one was interesting. Yeah. I, I, you know, Napoleon 1815 from Worthington. This was a much better game because it's a different... This is more like a war game. That was, yeah, that was a, a kind of a, a, a very light uh, game. But it was interesting. I enjoyed that, yes. too, because it used cards with combat and... Yeah, this this gave me more, I felt like, a more... I don't know. What do you... I don't know. Well, there's more meat on the bone here. Yeah, I, when I, I felt eating, more satisfied yes. having played all of this. Yeah. Like, yeah, I spent a couple hours doing this, and yeah. it was like, good. I made good choices. I yep. did some things. It was dramatic. It was fun. This was not eating rib tips. This was eating the full baby back yeah. you know, ribs. So rib tips are amazing. They are. And there is the time and a place for Burn those. Burn-ins are good, too. But, but this is also good. Why do we always talk about barbecue? Anyway, I, I, this game was very satisfying. Yes. Very satisfying, very enjoyable. A great production. I really I want to get eighteen oh six out as yep, well. That came out a couple years it. ago. We've got that. We'll crank that out. And and then you can link them together and yes. play like a a campaign of sorts. <laughs> you can play all of eighteen oh six, and then based on the results of what happens mm -hmm. there, uh, it changes your setup for this, and then you play through this. So what a, what a great concept. That's I mean, it, I like it. Is there going to be an 1808? I, I don't know. Or are they going to go in a different direction? This does say the Conqueror series. I, I mean... I could see any number. Sure, surely you do more of these. I would think, and as well as this was received by us, I would think that they would want Considering to Considering it's a French others. company and they've done a couple of Napoleonics, I'm sure they'll do they'll branch a out. couple more to round out the Napoleonics yeah. campaign. 
I'd like then, to see. I'd like to see a Hannibal game. Well, you based could, on this or some this ancient. system, you can do a lot with it. You could. So there's a lot of potential here. I have no idea what they're going to do in the future, but yeah. Mortal Polonics would also be very good. Well, I do know what they're doing in the future, just not with this system. Oh, so yes. They are... I do know what they're Yeah, they're, they're coming out with a new line of game called Orders of Battle. Yes. Uh, we're also going to play a prototype and do a yep. preview video. That's a different system, different style. It's a little lighter. Yep. But, yeah, I, I'm going to call it, this is a very good game. And I've thought about this. This is a 2020 game. We've played about 35 games this year, which is a few less than we normally do. Yeah, understandably. Because of COVID. I'm not so sure this one is not going to appear in my top 10. This was a... Uh, yeah. And I hate to say that because we've played so many really good games, but it, it is worthy of a spot. Yeah, it does, it does a lot of things that are different from a lot of the other games that we've played. Yeah. And does them very well, and it's a very enjoyable package with I agree. great production value. I mean, that that, you know, there was... It was hard to say anything that I really didn't like about it because I enjoyed this game I don't from start to finish, I, basically. I honestly don't know that I didn't like the retreat rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll we, I hate the concept of retreat when you can move into what you want. It just drives me flipping nuts. Yeah, but, so with the, and the retreat rule is you have to retreat a number of spaces equal to the difference between the strength point losses. And I'm okay with that. Right. That makes sense. So if you took none and I took two, I got to retreat two, two spaces. Two spaces. If I was the attacker, I have to move back to the space that I attack from. Yep. And then after that, the rest of my retreats, I can move wherever I want. Wherever you want. So he always hates it when it's you. I can move into a, um, a much more advantageous position, basically. Well, advantageous is a very... <laughs> I mean, you literally took over one of my objective cities by retreating. I mean, now, come on. That may have been... I actually rules, almost but... tore it up. <laughs> but, you know, that was... The, I, would, I would say that was the only rule I didn't like. I've just always felt retreat should be away and never into a positive position. Okay, you can put that down. We're in the middle of a video. <laughs> okay, go upstairs. We're, in the middle, we're literally <laughs> on camera. Upstairs, come on. Hurry up. We're not finished yet. Don't walk as slowly as possible. Go. <laughs> but anyway, retreat. That was the one thing I didn't like. But other than that, I don't know that I could say anything bad about this game. Yeah. There's nothing it. but goodness here. I enjoyed so. it. If, you, if you're into Napoleonics mm -hmm. and want an enjoyable couple hour game, go for yep. it. If you've never done Napoleonics but you're interested, this good. is a good place to a good. start, frankly. Yep. Especially if you've got an opponent, you get some cheeky bits of your... You know, hidden core strength. Yeah. Simple m movement resolution on the board. And it, it, I cannot express to you how easy this game was to learn. Well, and one other comment I'm going to make. One of, I, I believe one of the quintessential Napoleonics games is Nappy 20, right? The the Napoleonic 20 system yeah. from Victory Point Games. It covers a lot of battles. It has a, a, a very, I think, understandable, easy, but playable system. Yeah. This feels a lot like that, but with some neat added chrome. Yes. I think I like this better than Nappy 20, and that's one that I've enjoyed quite a bit. I think they're very different games No, they styles. are, but they, they are different in style. But to me, I always feel like that's one of the standards. Yeah, that, uh, okay, so what you're, you're comparing games. You compare what, it to how much we enjoyed that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, okay. or, or, or how that system conveys the, the, the yeah. points of the battle. Okay. This one, I really liked what they did. I would say that's going to challenge that one for a place in my heart as to what I think of when I think of yeah, Napoleon. Every games. Napoleonic game is going to be compared to this system. I, I and how think well so. It works. Okay. I think that's that's what that's I'm saying. It's not unreasonable to say. Yeah, and I, we haven't played a ton. We played maybe eight or ten. Yeah, but this was pretty good. So I'll. That's enough. I'll. That's enough. I've said enough. Napoleon 1807 from Shakos. 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 Yeah. yeah, I know I was going to say that. We, yeah, we decided that. I even Googled it. <laughs> it's, yes, it's a French company. Can they get it here in the U.S.? How are you going to get this? That's a great question. I, I don't I know if do they have distributors here. But I you can buy know. it directly from them and just pay the shipping. Yeah, I mean, they shipped it to us, and, I mean, we obviously didn't pay for the shipping, but no. it can be done. So I'm sure if you're going to spend some money and buy this game, I'm sure they'll figure out a way to yeah, get it. Yeah, well, I'm. I don't know if it's on the secondhand market of all game geek or if yeah. That, that I, I guess stuff. I didn't do that kind of. I research. don't know, but 
is uh, this was an enjoyable game. I had a really good time with it. I agree. That's what I care about. Yep. So, exactly. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from theplans8.com. And I'm Grant.